Hi, Brian. Hi, Paula. How are you? I'm not too bad in you. Good, good. Good. Uh, just for anyone that's going to be watching this video, uh, my name is Paula Kens. I'm the marketing manager for Process IQ. Um, we're a METS company based in Australia, and I'm just getting a debrief from our general manager in Africa, um, Brian Whitehead. He has just been over and uh, participated in Mining and Darba 2020. So, um, just thought it might be interesting for you as well to just get an idea of what happened over the three days and what sort of key industry messages were quite kind of current. So, um, Brian. You know, overall, how did you find participating in mining in Darba this year? Yeah, I think it was a um, it, it was a first for us. Obviously, it was a first for myself as well. And um, yeah, it's you know initially when you um, when you rock up to the Indaba, it can be quite intimidating. You've got all the top CEOs and all the top uh, brass there in the industry. You know, these are. Um, these are guys, you know, growing up in the mineral processing industry, it's, it's, uh, some of them are your heroes. You know, you see the, the Neil Frunemans and uh, the Mr. Kutufani's there, they're all there, you know, and I think it's, uh, it's brilliant uh, to have them available on a platform like this, you know, where it sort of breaks down the barriers. So it's almost like you have access to these guys and, um, <clears throat> you know, even if it's just to briefly chat about uh, some article or something they did or, you know, just how inspiring they are. It's yeah, brilliant. So it's it's amazing to have all these individuals, you know, at this one place, and um, you know, a lot of people putting their minds together and really uh, opening the dialogue on some really complex issues. You know, a lot of the things around social um, uh, social development. Uh, it's it's really it's 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 things that we don't always want to talk about, but yeah. it, that we need to talk about. So it's good to have. It's an amazing platform to have all these 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 bright minds collectively talking about these things. Yeah. Okay. And so, what, from your opinion, was the key sort of cohesive um, industry message that sort of came across really strongly over the three days? Yeah. Interestingly enough, you know, uh, mining has always been focused on producing, producing, and optimizing and efficiencies and and the one thing that I that kept coming up in all the talks here is uh, social development, you know, and social inclusion. And I think companies, if, especially uh, in Africa, you know, there's there's a lot of turmoil, um, there's a lot of unhappiness around mining communities that feel that they're not included and that they're not being empowered by the operations that take place there. So. I think the one thing that that was you know that surprised me a bit, and what, what also um, I was very happy about seeing is 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 what are mining uh, companies doing to try and include these communities around the mines, and what are they doing to to actually um, improve the social well-being? And you know, and mining is no longer about making quick profits in the short run, and you know, in and out. It's about yeah. going in there, going the long run, investing in that area, investing in that country, and um, you are really empowering people. Okay. And then you know, the last thing also that 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 came up quite a lot, you know, is uh, mineral prices are actually going well. We all know what the markets look like. Uh, gold is on a bull run, but a lot of the other base metal prices, uh, it's quite uh, low and subdued at the moment. So there's an increasing need to run at higher um, uh, um, efficiencies, you know, utilizing the same equipment. And the, the only way to do this is to leverage technology. And, you know, so mines really need to start embracing the digital revolution. And if a mine does not have a, a strategy in place to, to, to be digitally ready, uh, you know, they, they're going to get left behind. So it's, yeah. um, those are the two big focuses, social and uh, technology. Okay, great. Thank you. And what about, um, you know, obviously you've said about it, about, you know, the extreme pressures, you know, for improved operational performance and productivity, et cetera. But, you know, how is the, the METS industry, you know, how are we addressing this and helping with this in the long run? Yeah, so um, as I highlighted, you know, um, going down, uh, well, there's a lot of pressure on commodity prices currently. And, you know, the pressure is set to continue into 2020. Um, <clears throat> it will eventually ease off 
with some other industries taking off. But you know, in the short term, the outlooks are not are not uh, that uh, great. And so there's an increasing focus on brownfields operations. You know, um, yep. projects that are less capital intensive. So it's it's the, the the key focus for meds companies is on optimizing. You know, we we no longer um, there's, there's very little big capital intensive projects. So we need to focus on increasing the efficiency and improving the optimization. Um, well, optimizing circuits, increasing the efficiency, and we need to be more integrative and more collaborative. You know, it's. Um, we live in an era of, uh, if you look at the internet, open source, you know, it's people work together and um, we, we just don't have uh, the time to, to go and reinvent the wheel. You know, we need to collaborate and uh, in that collaborative spirit, um, it's, 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 it's going to cultivate a sharing environment. Yeah. You know, people are going to share more information, share more resources. Um, it's the only way. Okay. Um, uh, Mining and Darba had a great lineup of uh, guest speakers this year, but um, which topic did you sort of find the most interesting? Uh, sorry, interesting, and what um, more importantly, what did you take away from it? Yeah, so yeah, there were a lot of uh, great talks at the Indaba, and um, you know, it's it's difficult to signal out uh, um, single out uh, uh, any one of them, but yeah, the one that really um, hit close to my heart, I. I, I uh, was in a, a panel discussion about uh, mining 2050, you know, and what does it look like? And um, yeah, it's it's a uh, uh, first of all, I think to have a discussion on with a title like mining 2050, you know, it, it's it's great to sort of try and project, you know, where will we be at 2050, and and to sort of try and speak about <laughs> the 2020s uh, in hindsight. And um, but yeah, you know, something that came up there was you know, we, we need to stop forcing technology onto people and we need to try and mold. Um, instead of trying to mold people to fit in with technology, we need to try and mold. Um, oh, sorry, there's a... That's good. <laughs> okay. Work as usual. Carry on. <laughs> yeah. So, so instead of trying to mold technology, uh, mold people to fit in with technology, we need to, to have an approach where we, um, it, it goes both ways. But we need to have technology fit in with people. You know, we, we, we in the current era and in the medium uh, term, in the next five to 10 years, technology in some instances, it's not going to replace people. You know, we, we yeah. can automate to an extent, but we still need some human intervention on some scale. So the future that we're looking at is more uh, augmented future, you know, where technology and people are integrated, working together, you know, um, and to achieve a common goal. And, you know, that was where I actually heard the, the, the phrase um, uh, humanity 4.0, you know, and it's, it's a new trending term. You know, there's a lot of focus on industry 4.0 and yeah. technology more and higher and better and more efficient. But ultimately, if, if we don't focus on the humanity 4.0 uh, um, um, aspect as yeah. well, yeah. aspect you know it's it's uh, it's not going to work the only the key to developing sustainable solutions that can truly add value to operations in the long term you know is is being able to to diffuse information to a granular level what i mean by granular level is to the lowest point on that on that plant and uh, an operator must understand what's going on there he must understand and he must be able to work with that technology you know and if if they can't do it, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to greatly influence uh, how sustainable that solution is, you, you know, and um, if I can use an example of, yeah. um, you know, our approach typically is it, we place a lot of focus on change of management. And I think that's where we actually can, that's why we, why, why we are able to, to develop such uh, effective solutions. You know, if, if I look at one of the recent projects we did, um, it's, it's super interesting because initially after the installation, you know, uh, with technology and systems and integrating everything in the IoT, um, we had a very good uh, effect on the plant and, um, you know, uh, increasing throughput efficiency. But if you look a year down the line where we had minimal input and it was mostly driven by the guys on site, you know, the optimization continued to improve. 
and and uh, that's such a positive result you know that's that's what we need to do we need to um, have a collaborative and integrative environment that that includes the humanity humanity aspect into that as well okay that's great that was really insightful um and uh, for those that might have um, seen the post that we put on yesterday onto our uh, page on LinkedIn, um, you were lucky and quite privileged to have met um, the former Springbok rugby captain, Sia Khaleesi. So um, that was a really interesting uh, picture to receive that we, that we came all the way across into Australia. So can you just give us some sort of... Um, insight into that what was his talk about and what did again how did that sort of work with our industry yeah so um first of all uh, okay so we were based at the australian lounge and you know for three days we actually had they arranged a, um, a speaker every every day of the week yeah and um you know on the monday we had john de villiers which he was also a rugby player you know also a very inspiring story and um, <clears throat> on the Tuesday, we had Kirsten Landman, who was the first uh, woman to, com to complete the Dakar. And then on the Wednesday was Sia Kulisi, you know. So it was an amazing um, uh, lineup of speakers and very inspiring. You know, I'm just going to briefly, on the Jean de Villiers side, the first day, you know, this is a guy who, um, yes, had more than 100 caps for South Africa, you know, um, very well known um, also for his leadership skills in the Springbok rugby team. And, you know, he, he, he has uh, torn the ligaments in his one knee uh, six times. And he also had a um, horrendous shoulder injury, injury you know, on the field. And, you know, the, the doctors told him, sorry, you know, you're out. This is it. You know, that's, this is the end of your career. But yet every single time, you know, he bounced back. And okay. it's, it's, it's um, if I can, what I can take away from that first day is, you know, this is what John actually said. He, you know, he compared it, he, he made an analogy to business, you know, in the same way in business and in mining, you know, we're going to be faced by adversities. You know, there's going to be times, times will be tough. You know, things are, it's not yeah. always easy. You know, it, wow. uh, things might look <laughs> a bit gloomy at times, but it's important that, you know, we define our reality and, and we define um, where we're going to, you know, and yeah, you just, you get back up, you yeah. dust yourself off, you get back up. And, you know, the second day, Kirsten Landman, oh, also an amazing story, you know, um, she's a, um, she, for those of you who don't know, she, she actually drives a motorcycle, you know, she, so she, she completed the Dakar uh, uh, um, on a motorcycle and also, uh, you know, in a sport that's dominated by men, you know, where, and I mean, Kirsten Landman is, um, you know, <laughs> if you see her walking down the street, you you think she's a, a model or something, but, you know, because, uh, you know, it's, so it's, it's really not the typical person you'd expect to complete yeah. these. Individuals. And again, she also had a story where a um, uh, 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 motocross accident, really bad accident, I'm just going to sum it up quickly, you know, and she had uh, septicemia, she was in a coma for 11 days and, you know, it was, it was tough. She, she, uh, a very few people get out of this alive and, and she managed to pull through and, you know, she just spoke about how tough it was to get back on the bike and to actually go do the Dakar, you know, to overcome yeah. those fears. And again, it's the same sort of message uh, that paid on to from John the Villiers story is, you know, we have to, we have to overcome these adversities. And then the last day, which is obviously the highlight, was uh, meeting yeah. Sia. And uh, yo, what a great individual, you know, he's, um, he's so humble. Um, I, I, I can't believe how humble he is, you know, he's um, totally, yo, he's, he's so down to earth. And yeah, I think, in, uh, you know, in terms of what it takes to be a true leader, you know, I saw a lot of that, you know, we need to have um, intellectual humility we need to have uh, uh, situational humility you know we need to be inclusive and you know the one thing that that really stood out and I also did a post on LinkedIn about that was you know he mentioned on um, how uh, at the Springbok camp in the World Cup you know it didn't start off great but as soon as they, they realized you know who they are playing for they're not playing only for themselves but also for the whole South Africa yeah and you know that changed and i think really when we start changing our focus to to, to be more people orientated 
uh, focused on relationships and really, you know, when we optimize minds, apart from the people on site, we really, by increasing the life of a mine, you know, a mine is, if, if you go to places like the Congo, these isolated remote places, you'll find that mines are the lifeblood uh, in those areas. You know, it's, yeah. it's the main source of income for a lot of the families. Um, and there's so many people dependent on a mine. So optimizing a mine, it, it, it goes so deep, you know, it, it can really impact on people's lives and, uh, you know, touching on the humanity 4.0 thing. And again, with one of the uh, uh, messages on the, at the mining at Arbor was, you know, social inclusion and social, social development. And, you know, we, we have a lot of work that, that, that we can, that we need to do in order to improve the lives of people around mines, you know, and, um, but we need to do it in a sustainable way. You know, we obviously, mines can become more efficient. Uh, yeah. It can generate more wealth, which can then be spread or um, distributed more efficiently between the, between the, 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 the people in that area. Okay, that's really good. Thanks for that. Um, okay, so I think that's kind of all the, the sort of the update that I wanted to get from you and hopefully those that have um, watched this have found it quite insightful. Um, Brian, I know if some uh, of your contacts and um, people didn't get a chance to catch up with you at Mining and Darba, um, I know that we're going to be um, in Cape Town in the Comminution 20 MEI conference. So, um, yeah, we obviously will have a presence there. So, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what you can bring away from that as well. And hopefully we'll do um, a video on that too. And it's been invaluable for some people just to get some sort of information on, on how it went from our side. So, okay. Yeah, so if I can just, you know, closing off, I, 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 yep. I just want to... Um, uh, you know, the mining Daba is it's an incredibly interesting platform and but I think what it highlights is the need for these conversations. You know, we need really need to, to start um discussing and having dialogue around these tough and um not so easy to solve uh, problems. You know, we need to start yeah. talking about it. We need to collaborate more. Um, you know, and we, we really we need to get to a point where um we it's all about adding value. It's about adding value on processes, about adding value in people's lives. And, you know, if we need to critically evaluate what we are doing, if we are not adding value, you know, it's, um, we need to reevaluate that uh, yeah. seriously. So, but yeah, I, I, if, if anyone, yeah, um, it will definitely be at the communication, um, coming up uh, again. Um, yeah, in Cape end, Town of and yeah. end of April. Yeah. April and, yeah, so it would be great to catch up with, with whoever missed us there at the end of our. Okay, that's great. And I think just our last word is obviously just to thanks to all the um, people that made man, Mining and Darba happen because it's, yeah, it's mm. platforms like this that are just really key for us and, um, you know, making, making headway in our, in our industry. So thanks, Brian, for your time. And you're obviously awesome. in...